How you doing? This is David. I wanted to show you a uh, new to me Glock Model 21 that I just picked up. Bought it used, uh, but first of all, uh, I gotta eat one of these Mondo breads. If anyone wants a recipe, let me know. Hmm, they're just delicious. Anyway, this was a police trade in that I picked up used. Chamber and 45 ACP. And, uh, Every time I get a clock, I always put a three and a half pound connector in because I like the way the, the trigger feels on it. And uh, for a police trade in, you'll notice it doesn't have much holster use. Most police trade ins have a lot of heavy holster use and haven't been fired much. But strangely enough, this doesn't seem to have much holster use at all. It's got an interesting uh, crest down there from the police department. I think it says Hillsdale. If any of you can identify what police agency this is from, please let me know. I'd be interested in knowing. It does have an accessory rail, night sights, which are pretty dim. Anyway, I know a lot of you guys are hesitant about buying used firearms as well. You should be, especially if you buy them online. Uh, but I don't think you have to be as worried with clocks as you would if you got something like this. This is a Dan Weston Sea Bob. It's a Commander Bobtail. It's called the Bobtail because the corner of the uh, grip is uh, is angled and polished. And uh, if you got something like this used, you have to be really careful when you buy it because if someone monkeyed around with it and they need some some work done on it, you have to take it to a gunsmith or a pistol smith to get work done. You want to change the grip safety, the thumb safety, the ignition parts like the hammer and sear. That has to be by a, a gunsmith. You could probably change the sights yourself. Uh, you want to fit a barrel bushing. You have to know what you're doing. So uh, this pistol is extremely accurate. It's got a light trigger, very little creep. It breaks at about four and a half pounds. It's very easy to be accurate with it. Nice shooting gun. If you're not familiar with Dan Weston's, I highly recommend them. Anyway, back to the Glock. Came with three mags. I'm gonna field strip it. Take the mag out. Make sure it's empty. Pull the trigger. Pull down on the tabs. I can see it's pretty dirty too. I'm going to give it a good cleaning and oiling. I'm not going to go over the cleaning and the oiling, but I'm going to go over what I do every time I take in a used Glock, which be, would be putting in the three and a half pound connecting bar. Oh. It doesn't give you a true three and a half pound trigger pull. It takes it more like to four pounds. And uh, I'm just going to polish up some of the ignition surfaces that makes the trigger a little bit easier for me. Some people don't like to do it. They like to keep the five and a half pound in there and that's fine. Uh, if you're not familiar with Glocks, uh, I recommend them. It's a whole different world from a 1911. They're both great pistols. I'm not going to get into any type of uh, argument over which one's better than the other. Uh, one thing I do have to say is uh, I had a uh, 22 caliber conversion kit from Tactical Solutions on my Model 17 and that's what helped me learn to handle the uh, Glock trigger. It's a matter of uh, only uh, letting up on the trigger until you feel the click of the reset and then pulling the trigger again for subsequent shots. So uh, if that makes any sense, uh, that's how you practice. You don't release the trigger all the way after the first shot. Keep the trigger depressed and then let up slightly until you feel the click of the reset then you pull it again and that gives you a a, a crisper type of trigger sensation. Before I go any further let me get my trigger pull gauge on this to see where we're at right now. Uh, of course it's upside down. Five pounds, five ounces. Uh, 
That was about four pounds, four pounds, four ounces. I don't know why it always varies so much. Could be a, the point at which the hook is resting on the trigger. Five pounds nine ounces. Try it very close to the tip of the trigger this time. That's five pounds four ounces. Gonna take out the recall spring assembly, take out the barrel. Yeah, it's pretty dirty in there. You know what clocks are so reliable? Put a round in the chamber. Can't see it, but you wiggle it around. A match barrel's not going to wiggle around so much. It's going to be a little tighter. But the clock chambers are looser, so they can feed all types of ammunition more reliably. Dang, that thing's dirty. I wonder if this was a range gun. Seems like it's been shot a bit. Okay, what I'm going to do is the parts that uh, ride on the ignition assembly would be the rear of the striker right there. I'm going to polish that up a little bit. And then there's this uh, striker safety that rides on the trigger bar as well. I'm going to take that out and uh, polish that up a little bit as well. Nice thing about Glocks, 90% of the parts, you can do all the work with one of these Glock tools. If you're going to make your own tool and use a punch, make sure it's not a tapered punch. If it's a tapered punch, it's going to enlarge the holes in the plastic frame, and you don't want that. First thing we want to do is remove this uh, rear plate. And to do that, you uh, put the tool in front of the uh, that striker pin, push down take the pressure off and you want to slide this plate down. Plate comes out. This little pin fell out but this pin goes in the spring there. This spring is the extractor spring. Looks like that. Just remember uh, the non-spring end is a spring that interfaces with the extractor. And the extractor should drop right out. There's the extractor. Striker comes right out. And so does this little safety plunger. Be careful because there's a spring on the end. Don't want to lose that. I lost one once and had to wait a week for a replacement. Okay, to open up the striker, there's uh, two black cups here. They're split in half. You gotta release the pressure here. By pulling back on the spring and the cup should just fall away like that. There's the two cups. Spring comes off. Doesn't matter which direction the spring goes in. And then this plastic collar comes off the striker. So uh, this is the part the that the trigger bar acts on. It actually pulls the striker back and then slips off and then the striker is pushed forward. So what I'm going to do is do a little polishing on that end of the striker and then on this end too. And uh, there's a lot of ways to uh, use it. Some people use flits. I use an automotive rubbing compound. Some people use a Dremel. 
could use a Q-tip. Pull a compound on your Q-tip and just rub at it. I suppose if you shoot a couple thousand rounds through your uh, pistol, that'll probably uh, do the same thing. Because they do kind of uh, mellow, shall we say, with age. Okay, that's one way to do it. I'm going to show you the Dremel way next. Okay, I got the Dremel. Make sure you use a buffing wheel. Don't ever use sandpaper or files or anything on your Glock. Glocks don't need any filing. They don't need sanding. They don't need hammers or punches. Just push with the Glock tool. If you ever have to hammer on your Glock, you're doing something wrong. Stop and get some help. And I like to do it inside a bucket because the stuff gets thrown all over the place. So, uh, I'm a lazy guy, so I didn't get a whole lot of hand polishing done on that. I'm going to use the Dremel. If I could find the switch. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. That's the shine I wanted on the front end. That's the polish I wanted on the bottom end. That's all you need to do on the striker. Next up is a firing pin safety plunger. That's this part. I do the sides as well because it does travel up and down inside the plunger bore or the slide. But you do the rounded section because that rides on the trigger bar.
And that should be good enough. It's kind of nice and shiny. Okay, I'm going to clean the parts and then reassemble them. Okay, let's start putting this thing back together. I did the cleaning. And uh, that thing was pretty dirty. Let's start putting the striker back together. There's the striker. This black plastic collar goes on next. Spring after that. Then these uh, split cups go on. This is where it's handy to have three hands. I push down on the table. Gonna push down on the table. Nope, I don't have it. Try it. There we go. Make sure the halves meet. And uh, I cleaned the uh, firing pin channel or striker channel out really good. It was filthy. But uh, it goes in like that. Next comes the extractor. See the, the end with the round pin goes towards the rear. Put that into the uh, striker groove. Remember this part, metal to metal. There's the metal end. There's the spring end. That goes into the smaller hole. I forgot something, didn't I? I forgot the plunger. The safety plunger. Make sure that spring is well seated on there. If it's not well seated, you will have problems. It happened to me once and I uh, was experiencing piston slap. So I gotta move the uh, striker back a little bit in order to accommodate the plunger. Push the plunger in, and then the push the uh, striker in. Make sure the uh, extractor seated, and then here's the back plate. Start it in the slide. Start it in its channel in the slide. Push down on the striker so that the striker is halfway covered. Then using the Glock tool, push down on the extractor tensioner, and something just fell out. That was the extractor. Okay, let's try it again. Pushing on the spring, I'm pushing the backing plate in. Try it the other way. There we go. Got it started. Backing plate is over both springs. Push it in until it clicks. There you have it. Check the striker.
Check the extractor. Make sure when you do a job like this you always function test just to make sure everything's working properly. Yeah, striker's working. Pull back on the striker. Should have spring tension. And uh, you know, I'm going to put a drop of oil around the barrel. One drop is all you need. Glocks don't need a lot of lubrication. Put one drop on your finger. All the way around the barrel. Put one little drop in the, uh, I don't know what you call that thing. I guess it's the barrel lug. Right in there. Take the excess from that and put it on the barrel hood. Uh, rest will wipe away. People say clocks run dry, but no, they don't really run dry. Whereas a 1911 has to be well lubricated. Glocks just take a few drops here and there. And the uh, recoil spray goes uh, front end in that hole. Back end pushes into the half moon step. In the barrel. And that's it. Now to the frame. You'll hear of Glock frames as a two pin frame and a three pin frame. If you have a generation one or generation two Glock, you won't have this upper pin here. You'll just have these two lower pins. Generation three and four has three pins. So uh, normally you just push this. Uh, Take the top pin out. The top pin is the first one out and the first one in when you reassemble. And then that'll allow you to remove the... Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. I'll do the uh, second pin. Okay, there's the second pin. That will allow us to remove the slide stop. Third pin out is the one in the back. That's the smallest pin in diameter. And when that's out, you can remove the uh, locking block. Just pry that up with your Glock tool. And it just comes out like that that off to the side. For the rest of the assembly you could just pull up on the ejector and the trigger and trigger bar will come out, come out along with it. And uh, that's a connector that I'm going to be replacing right there. So you kind of have to, uh, there's a little part of the connector, this is called the crucible, that's in a, uh, in a groove in the plastic of the trigger, and you just have to kind of twist it. It's held in with a spring. There we go. Going to have to twist the right end forward. And then when you pull up the spring, the uh, spring, when you reassemble, the top coil of the spring is the top part of the S. 
and the bottom part of the spring S is the other way. So the opening of the spring on the bottom is on the left and the opening for the spring on the top faces to the right. And with that you can just slide the trigger bar off of the spring. Easier said than done. Let's try it again. There we go. Got the trigger bar off. At the spring I could just let it lay loose in there in the trigger. Next thing I'm going to do on the uh, transfer bar, I'm going to polish up uh, the side, the top, uh, any place where it might rub. First I'm going to clean it good, then I'm going to polish it. On the uh, trigger, to remove the uh, connector, there's a hole on the back that the Glock tool fits into. Just push. You can see that coming up. If it comes up high enough. Just pull it out. See if there's any markings on there. Let me get my replacement. This is my replacement. We can see any difference. Yeah, the angle, the angle up here is a little bit different. It just allows the lead off on the trigger bar. Comes off a little differently. I'm going to uh, polish the new one as well. This gets polished up along this side. Okay, I got the connector here. Start polishing that. I'm just going to do the face of it. There we go, that looks better. Now for the connector. Now there's a place on the connector where the Dremel won't, can't fit, and that's right in there. So I'm just going to take a Q-tip. Use a Q-tip to polish that up.
I'm going to do the outside of the bar. to the top of this little riser. This is a piece that pushes up on the firing pin safety plunger. I'm going to do the top of the crucible now. That's all that gets polished. Okay, let's start putting this thing back together again. I'm going to start with the trigger housing. I'm going to affix the trigger bar to the spring in the trigger housing. There, that's hooked up the way it's supposed to be. However, I forgot to put on the connector. Here's a connector, and the connector, the bottom leg of the connector, goes into the slot on the trigger housing. Just push that in. There we go. Push it in until it stops. And then you kind of have to twist the trigger bar so this side end of the trigger bar goes into the slot in the back of the trigger housing. There you go. Okay. Get the frame, locking block, goes in like that, and push it down. Next thing is the trigger housing. Could uh, guide the trigger down. While you're guiding the trigger down, the trigger housing slides into its position in the frame, like that. Push that down. 
Okay, remember I talked about the pins? The top pin goes in first. I'll show you why. Get it centered. Okay, the reason why the top pin goes in first is because the slide release is held in by the, the trigger pin. So the slide release has a spring on it, so make sure your spring is in good shape, it hasn't fallen off. So uh, if people put the slide stop in and the trigger pin in first, and then they put the top pin in, uh, this spring is gets in the way of the top pin, and you'll have an impossible time getting the top pin in. Or the spring will be on top of the top pin, and this spring goes under the top pin. So what you have to do is uh, the, the uh, slide stop fits into a groove on the left side of the locking bar. So you have to guide it in there. Line that up. So right now the spring is in the place it's supposed to be. It's under the top pin. And then I could take the trigger pin, slide that in. Doesn't matter if the trigger pin goes in next or if the uh, trigger assembly pin goes in. And I move the slide stop out of the way. I gotta do it again. And you're gonna have to wiggle the slide stop. This is where people get their hammers out and you don't wanna you don't wanna do that. You just wiggle the uh, move it front or back. So you could get it in with, with just a thumb. Then get it centered in the frame. Now the last pin is the trigger assembly pin. That's the smallest diameter pin. That goes in to hold the trigger assembly in. Get that centered in there. No hammers used. Just get that centered. There you go. Okay, for oil, one drop goes on, on each of these slide rails, so there's one drop there, drop there, one drop there, whoops, I got too much on there. And then a half a drop goes on this little part of the connector that sticks up. Kind of looks like a half moon. There, that's all that needs. And then uh, I neglected to put any uh, oil on the rail of the slide, so put a drop. Drop on the rail. Get the other side. Sorry if you can't see that. Okay, clear as mud. It's a lot better than the carburetors I do because with the carburetors I do I always have leftover parts. There's no parts left over. So that part's working. Next thing up is to do a range test, but let's put me on the spot and uh, see if there's any difference in the trigger. difficult for me to tell if there's any difference. At least the darn thing is clean now. 
Okay, let's see what we got. Four pounds, seven ounces. That's about the best you're going to get with those three and a half pound triggers. It takes it to about four and a half pounds. Try it again. Gradual pull. This thing doesn't stop but where the trigger lets off, so I have to watch it and pull gradually. Four pounds, two ounces. I wasn't watching. Do one more time. One more time and that's it. Then I'm cleaning up. That's about four pounds, a little over four ounces. Okay, there you guys have it. Enjoy your Glocks. Let me know if you know where this police department is. See you later.